What is the best entity for a real estate investor? How you doing everybody? I'm Scott Jelinek, the founder of the Master Investor Academy, where we cover the five pillars of real estate investing. That's marketing, wholesale, rehab, rentals, and raising private money. And today I want to do a video for you on what is the best legal entity for you to do your real estate investing in. And um, so for those of you who don't know, your legal entity is basically the name, the uh, the body of which you're going to do your, your investing in. It could be, there's multiple different things. It could, you start off as a sole proprietor. If you've never done deals and you've never set up a business and you've never done anything, you're automatically a sole proprietor by default. Um, there's nothing the matter with that. You can do business as a sole proprietor, especially if you're brand new. And a lot of people won't say this to you, but if you're brand new, you don't have to go spend a bunch of money and set things up. Do deals first. Get some deals under your belt. There's no point in you spending a few hundred dollars and waiting for your paperwork to come in before you can start doing anything. You're, you're legal, allowed to do business as a sole proprietor. Just go ahead and do deals. Don't worry about it. If you're a sole proprietor, it's a good way to start. You don't really need to have all the other advantages of your other entities. If you're just getting started, it's not a big deal. One of the biggest advantages of an entity is asset protection. Well, if you're just starting, you don't have any assets. You have nothing to protect. Plus, your, your likelihood of having an issue is way slimmer because you just started and you don't have a lot of deals under your belt yet. That's your first, your first way. If you get started sole proprietorship, you're automatically a sole proprietor by default. The day you set up and you say, Joe Buys Houses is my business name, you're a sole proprietor. That's it. Without you doing anything else, you, you get a business license, you're a sole proprietor. The second way um, for you to have your entity, for you to hold your properties or to do your investing is going to be an S-Corp. Um, well, let me preface that by saying there's also a C-Corp, and I'm not even putting that up there because I don't believe a C-Corp is beneficial for a real estate investor. Um, you really got to be a big business to want to be a C-Corp. There are added advantages for asset protection, but I can teach you guys how to get around that anyway. And then you can't carry your losses forward and a lot of other things where I don't think a C-Corp is even a possible option. Um, now, when I say these things, mind you, let me tell you, I'm not an attorney and I'm not an accountant. So obviously my advice, take it for what it's worth, but you still speak to whoever you need to speak to who's going to be setting up your, um, your entity as well as doing your taxes. An S-Corp, that's your second choice. Um, an S-Corp is basically, it's, now you have a protective entity. It's a, it, say it's Joe Buys Houses Corporation um, or Joe Buys Houses Incorporated. Now you'll be buying properties in that name. You'll actually be signing as it'll say Joe Buys Houses and you'll be the president or um, vice president or whatever title that you're giving yourself on it. Um, that has a lot of advantages um, and it's definitely an S-Corp, way better than a C-Corp, a lot of advantages and I, I think an S-Corp and an LLC are very similar in how you use them except if we have to go by a choice, my choice, my best entity is going to be the LLC. And the reasons, they're very similar, and you can choose, you opt how you want to be taxed on your LLC. You can opt to be taxed as a sole proprietor, or you can be opt, opt, opt to be taxed as an S-Corp. I would always opt to be taxed as an S-Corp. Um, that's your best advantages. Now, again, you're going to have to discuss this with your, with your accountant. But an LLC, one of the big advantages, and I've seen this in court, and a lot of people don't talk to you about this. Well, when you have a corporation, you're required to have meeting minutes. You're required to do annual um, annual um, officers to resend them into the, uh, to the state. There's a lot of requirements that if you don't meet those requirements or if you were to get sued and they want to see your annual minutes, and they want to see your book, if you didn't do it, they can disregard the whole entity. Um, I've seen that happen where I was like, no, we have a corporation, what are you talking about? And then you find out there was requirements you have to do annually and if you don't do those requirements, they can say the whole thing is disregarded because you didn't keep up with it. With an LLC, you have the same benefits of the S-Corp only you don't have all those requirements. You're governed by an operating agreement, which you do. Well, you can have your attorney do it, or you can do it yourself. The operating agreement spells out exactly what your business is to do, your LLC, who's the member. You can have more than one member. You can say you're 50% and your other guy's 50% or however you want to split it up. And if you change that, you don't have to notify the state. You do a new operating agreement. It's, you know, it's, it's internal, and I love that. I love that it's all done internally. So you don't have to get the state involved every time you want to do something. Um, again, I'm speaking from the state of Virginia. I've, ha I've had two different states that I've done, so you may want to check to make sure the state that you're in operates the same way that mine does. But 100%, if I was to recommend, I would say an LLC. Now, there's also limited partnerships, which I didn't put down, not because I don't think they're good, but because I don't know that much about them. I don't use them. And land trusts, which land trusts I do like and I do use, but not as my entity. That's just a way we... 
we hide, basically we, we hide the name of, you say it's in Joe Buy's property, LLC, if you put it in a trust, it'll show up on the tax records as, as 123 Main Street Trust, and so it never says that it's owned by Joe's Buy Properties, which is helpful. Um, if you were gonna be sued, one of the big reasons, we have tax advantage and then we also have liability protection. Um, one of the big advantages of doing that is now, if you are gonna get sued, they're gonna do an asset search on you, and if they can't find any assets, likelihood the lawyer is gonna say, you know, let's not waste our time with this lawsuit, the guy doesn't have anything. Um, if he sees, well, you have 50 houses, he's gonna say, well, yeah, let's do it, don't worry, you don't have to pay me, I'll take it on contingency, because they know they can win. So that's one of the reasons. Another question before I let you go that I get asked a lot is how many properties, now this is rentals, mind you, how many rentals can I put in one LLC? Or should I get a different LLC for every single rental? I know people who do that, mind you. They have 20 properties and they have 20 LLCs. I hate that idea. For me, I'm, I'm a disorganized guy and to me that's a paperwork nightmare. That's a bookkeeping nightmare. That's an accounting nightmare for doing your returns. It's gonna be expensive. And there's really no benefit to it other than asset protection. So then you say, well, if somebody sued 123 Main Street, I don't have to worry about it carrying over to my other properties. And they're right about that. But again, there's another way around that. We, we teach a thing on asset protection, which I'm not getting into right now, and I don't like to do it in public forums. But there's other ways to protect your assets without having to have a different LLC. The expenses would be so ridiculous that it just, it wouldn't even be worth it. The second thing is, should you do your rentals and your flips or wholesales or your active investing in the same entity? And my answer for that is going to be definitely no. Have one entity that holds your rentals and one entity that you do your, your assigning, your flips, your renovations, everything through that separate entity. And the reason is simply, well, there's two reasons. One is your, your taxes. You want to be taxed at, on your rentals as passive income. And if you're actively investing, it may get confused and then they tax you as ordinary income, which is going to be way higher. You don't want to do that. That takes away one of the big benefits of rentals if you start paying the higher tax rate. And the other one is lawsuits. You know, I hate to say it, but you're going to get sued. That's part of this business. Um, your landlords are the highest, we're the highest sued profession in the world. Um, that's just the way it is. Tenants are going to want to sue you, but on top of that, when you do renovations, you have issues that may arise six months later, may arise a year later, where somebody says, well, who, who sold me this house? And well, you know what, they, they didn't check there was termite damage underneath, and they said everything was good, and they're going to file a lawsuit against you. Well, you don't want to have everything mixed up. So when you get that lawsuit, now they're saying, oh, well, he's got all these rental properties, we're gonna go after those. I have a lawsuit pending right now, um, and this is from a, a title issue, it had nothing to do with me, but title insurance paid off the, um, the issue, and now title insurance is suing me. Again, I believe I'll win when we end up in court, but I'm, I'm, I have peace of mind because the entity that they're suing, the entity that sold the house, owns nothing. So if they were to win, it's not like they're actually gonna get money, they're gonna get a judgment against an entity that owns nothing. And this is important because if it was against your rentals, they still wouldn't get money from you, but they'd be a lien now. You could never sell one of your rentals without satisfying that judgment, and that would be a problem for you. So again, take it for what it's worth. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. Speak to your attorney and your CPA, but these are just my opinions. I go with the LLC. I go with separating my passive and my active investing, two different LLCs. Um, we could talk further at another time. If you're interested in land trusts, um, that's just an added layer of protection. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this helps to answer some of your questions. I've been getting this question a lot. Um, please, by all means, leave any comments you have down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll see the next video when it comes out. You have a great day.